Hey guys, how's it going? Connor here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Timberin Rear Suspension Enhancement System for our 2020 Ford Ranger. Our Timberin Rear Suspension Enhancement System is going to be an excellent option for our Ford Ranger here. Now this can be used for medium or to heavy duty towing. Basically, it's going to replace the factory jounce bumper. As we can see the difference here, to hold the two up side by side. So our Timberin spring is going to be a little bit taller than our factory jounce bumper, which means it's going to engage sooner. So that's essentially going to translate to our truck not sagging as much. So in addition to the overall height increase, our new Timberin spring is going to be made of a lot thicker and tougher rubber than our factory jounce spring. So this is again going to stop us from sagging when we have a load placed on the vehicle. Now the great thing about this Timberin option here is it's not going to affect your unloaded ride quality because it's only going to engage when we have a load applied, whether you're hauling stuff in your truck bed or we're towing a trailer with a heavy tongue. So in order to show you some of the benefits that our Timberin Rear Suspension Enhancement System offers for our Ford Ranger here, we're going to take some measurements on the stock vehicle ride height when it's completely unloaded. We're going to be measuring first from the ground to the center of the wheel well at the rear. We're going to be doing that at the front as well. And then we're going to compare those measurements for you while we have some weight in the bed so we can see that the benefit that the Timberins offer. So the distance from the ground to the top center of the wheel well here at the rear is going to be about 39 inches. And again, this is going to be the factory ride height with no weight added to the bed. So now we're going to measure again from the ground to the top center of the fender well here. It's going to give us about 36 inches. So this is going to be the factory uh, unloaded ride height. So what we're going to do for you is we are going to place some weight in the bed. We're going to remeasure this for you. And then we're going to install the Timberins and put the weight back in the bed to show you what the difference is between the factory suspension and our Timberins. So now that we have some weight in the bed of a truck, we're going to go ahead and retake our measurements with the factory stock suspension. So it looks like we're about 36 inches and if you recall we were 39 inches from the factory with no weight so it looks like our rear end dropped about 3 inches which is quite substantial. So now we're going to go ahead and measure the front and we have about 36 and a half inches which if you recall the factory unloaded measurement was 36 inches. So that means the front of our truck raised about a half an inch. Now I know you may think that's not a lot. But when it comes to our little Ranger here, that's going to make a big difference on the overall handling and stability of the truck. We're not going to have near as much stopping power. About 60% of the vehicle's braking is going to be on the front axle. So when we take weight off the front axle, we're obviously not going to be able to stop as soon and our brakes just are going to feel a lot weaker. Another couple other things we could have issues with are going to be tire wear. So since we don't have as much weight on the front tires, the camber is not going to be correct, which is again going to create irregular tire problems, which are going to be a headache and a costly repair down the road. And then finally, our headlight aim. So since our front of our vehicle is pointed up in the air, we're not going to have as clear a view on the road. Our lights are going to be pointed up, so we're going to be blinding others driving by. So now that we have some weight in the bed of our truck here, we're going to go ahead and take our Ranger through our bump course here at e-trailer. And right away, we can definitely feel the weight in the back end. It's definitely causing our truck to shift side to side. It's even taking my steering wheel here if we wanna see that. It's causing it to jolt back and forth. Our truck definitely feels unstable. This is not something that I would wanna drive around on the highway with or take turns. So we're definitely gonna have some sway issues. And overall, it just doesn't really feel too safe with all this weight. So now we're going to go ahead and take our truck with the weight in the back through our slalom course, which is going to be evasive maneuvering at about 10, 15 to 20 miles an hour. We can definitely feel that truck swaying around in the back end. It's going to be a lot of body roll and the steering just doesn't feel nearly as responsive. So now with our tempers installed, we went ahead and put the weight back in the truck bed. Now let's take our measurements and see how they changed. Again, we're gonna measure from the same spot we did before, the ground to the center of the wheel well. We got 37 inches. And if you remember, with our stock suspension and the weight in the truck bed, we had 36 inches, which means we gained back an inch, which is great. Now we're gonna to move to the front here, 
And we're again gonna take the same measurement. It looks like we got about just a hair over 36. So it looks like we gained back about a half an inch to a quarter, which again is really good for this truck and the Timbrans. So by bringing the rear of the truck back up and the front end down, this is gonna again sort of mirror the factory ride quality we had in regards to stability and braking power. It's also again, again it's gonna decrease the chance of irregular tire wear and the headlights shooting off up into the sky. So now we're gonna go back over our bump course here at each trailer with our tempered installed and our weight back in the truck bed. We're gonna to try to mirror the same conditions when we took this test with the factory suspension. And right away, we can definitely tell it's more stable. The steering wheel isn't jolting as much as we were before. We don't have as much side to side movement. We do have some movement, of course, because we are driving over these bumps at a moderate speed, but I can definitely tell an improvement overall. So now we're gonna go on our slalom course with our timbers installed and the weight in the truck bed to show you the difference. Let get up to speed here, make some evasive maneuvering. The truck just definitely feels a lot more planted to the road. Come to a stop up here. The braking is also much, much better. Gonna go back around one more time for you. Again, as I pointed out, the steering wheel just feels smoother. The truck feels more planted. I feel more in control. It's just a lot more stable overall. So a common question we get here at E-Trailer, or what's the best type of suspension enhancement for their truck? And the answer is, it's gonna vary by user. We see we have an option here with the Timberland Springs, which are a great, easy to install, maintenance-free option. Another alternative you may be familiar with are a set of airbags. Now how these differ from airbags are is number one, again, they're gonna be super simple to install. We don't have to run any airlines into the cab or to the rear of a vehicle. So in regards to installation, it's definitely gonna favor the Timberlands. And number two, maintenance. The maintenance is gonna be essentially non-existent with our Timberlands here. Whereas with a set of airbags, we would have to perform routine maintenance to make sure the bags are functioning correctly. Now let's go ahead and show you how easy these are to install yourself. So to start our installation today, we wanna to get our vehicle up in the air enough so that we have our rear axle hanging freely. Now if you don't have a lift to work under like we do, chances are you don't. What we can do is we can take some floor jacks and we can place them under the frame just enough so that our rear axle hangs and our tires aren't touching the ground. Once this is done, we're gonna to need to go ahead and remove our factory jounce bumper here we can see is this yellow spring that's mounted to the bottom side of the frame and contacts the top of the leaf spring. In order to do this, we're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket as well as an extension. A six inch extension should do fine. As you can see there, we only have one bolt holding the jounce bumper the frame. So once that's removed, we can go ahead and take this off, set it aside. We won't be reusing it, but we do want to keep it in case we ever remove the Timberlands from the vehicle. Now that we have the factory jounce bumper removed, we can go ahead and install our Timberland spring. So you can see here, we're going to have a metal plate that's going to go atop the spring. And then we can take our M10 hex head bolt, can thread it down through here, so we get it to line up with the hole, like so. And then a useful tip here, um, we wanna use a short well 17 millimeter socket to reinstall the timber and spring, because if we have a deep well, we're not gonna be able to use that to push the bolt up into the hole on our frame. So we're just gonna simply take the configuration like so, place it up into position. We're gonna be reusing the same hole, which is right there. And we're just gonna try to get a couple threads started to hold it in place. Now we're just gonna go ahead and snug it up to the frame here. Now we don't have a torque specification for this bolt, so I'm just gonna come back here with my ratchet and give it about a half a turn, I'd say. Or maybe a little more, just whatever feels right. You don't want to over tighten it, so that should be good. And now that we have the other spring installed, that's gonna do it today for the installation of our Timberland Rear Enhancement System. 
for our 2020 Ford Ranger.